Quebec City is full of charm and history and culture. If you've seen our other videos about this marvelous city, then I'm sure you've already started a wish list of places to visit. Well, prepare to make the list a little longer because in this video, I'm sharing more amazing spots for you to check out. Here on Avenue Cartier, they have the most amazing massive lampshades that go all up and down the street. It's the seventh edition of a partnership between this district, the Montcalm Arts District, and the Musée National des Beaux-Arts du Québec. They're by an artist named Diane Abomsawin, and at night they illuminate the street beautifully and remind you that you are indeed in the Arts District. The Musée du Fort is a small theatre with a multimedia show that precisely coordinates light projections and sounds with a model of miniatures. The presentation is about half an hour, so it's good to time it for a moment when your feet could use a rest. I took some photos during the actual presentation just to give you an idea of what it's like. The show tells the stories of six sieges of Quebec City, and the model itself is really neat and has a lot of teeny tiny details to look at. It's 400 square feet, and it's made to look like Quebec City in the year 1750. The show is definitely a fun and unique way to experience history. You're bound to hear a lot about the Plains of Abraham in Quebec City, and with very good reason, because so much history has happened on this ground. I'm just standing on a small part of it here in this massive green field, but it occupies a lot more territory. And this area is perhaps best known as the site of the Battle of the Plains of Abraham, where the British, led by General James Wolfe, defeated the French. You'll find lots of people hanging out or exercising, there's museums, and lots of special events like concerts. The St. Louis Forts and Chateau National Historic Site is an archaeological site that's hidden beneath the Dufferin Terrace and Chateau Frontenac. The first structure here was built in 1620 by Samuel de Champlain. Later in 1648, it officially became a chateau when the first governor of New France moved in. For over 200 years, this site was the official residence for 32 of the 40 French and British colonial governors. When you descend the stairs and go underneath the boardwalk, you can see the remains of the chateau. You can see the ice house, for example, and three rooms that were used to prepare the food, starting with the scullery where all of the messy prep, like taking feathers out, was done, and they used to throw the garbage out the window. You can also see the kitchen where the food was actually prepared, including the oven, as well as the butler's pantry where all of the finishing touches were put onto the food. It was then taken upstairs to the governor, where important decisions were often made over the food, because this was the seat of power for the whole colony of New France. You can also see fragments of bombs, and more than 6,000 of these projectiles were once fired on Quebec City as part of the siege in 1759. In the end, however, it was a chimney fire that ultimately burned down the chateau in 1834. At the time, they weren't really sure what to do with the site. It wasn't until four years later in 1838 that they ultimately built the boardwalk as it appears now, and that's why the site underneath is still so well preserved. If you're walking on the Dufferin Terrace above, there are also several glass windows that let you take a peek down at the castle remains below. I'm standing in the courtyard at the Monastère des Augustines, and when this monastery was founded, this was in the middle of the woods. Now we are smack in the heart of old Quebec, surrounded by the city. The sisters who founded this monastery are recognized as pioneers in nursing and pharmacy, and they set up a hospital here in 1639, which was the first hospital in Canada and the second hospital in all of North America, the first being in Mexico. There's a museum here now that tells the story of the monastery and its three founders. On May 4th, 1639, three young Augustinian sisters left from Dieppe and they set sail for New France. They brought with them a trunk that was known as the Trunk of Three Keys, and it contained everything that they needed for themselves and to set up their hospital. It was a symbol of the link that united them all and also served as an altar for their daily mass on board the ship. And for me, my favorite part of the museum is seeing the artifacts that they brought with them to New France all those years ago. There's a mortar and pestle they brought to help make medicines, as well as a large bowl. There's a missile stand that was brought in the trunk and was likely a gift from the Duchess of Daiguillon. 
Something interesting is that the Duchess was the niece of Cardinal Richelieu. He is quite a well-known historical figure, and the Duchess was the main benefactor of the Augustinian sisters. It was the Duchess that made it possible for them to establish the first hospital in New France, so that's an interesting connection, I think. She also gave them a painting from the late 15th century that you can also see on display. There's also a wax doll that's meant to be the Christ child that was sent to the three founders for their first Christmas in New France in 1639. And honestly, it's in such good condition that personally I'd never have guessed its age. You can also see two pewter plates that bear the coat of arms of the first governor of New France. They were given to the sisters by his wife along with all her other possessions when she died in 1685. You can also see a coin that they estimate is from around 1654, and it's really difficult to see, but Louis XIV himself is represented on it. You can also see up on the wall a huge chronological list of the first sisters at the monastery, which goes all the way back to 1650. You can see the individual names and ages of the women. Today, the monastery is a holistic wellness center attached to the hospital. And if you're on a budget, the museum part is completely free. If you're not on a budget, then you can even book in for a yoga class or a massage. And there's even a dining room area where you can practice some mindful eating. To be honest, this museum really took me by surprise. I just so enjoyed learning about its history, especially of those three founders, and just imagining those three young women setting sail for New France, crossing the ocean all those years ago in 1639, and being able to see the artifacts that they brought along with them, establishing the first hospital in Canada, the second in North America, and learning about its impact on nursing, medicine, and healthcare. This house behind me here is one of the oldest in Quebec City. It's the Jacquet House, and it's very distinct with its red and white. It was built by Francois Jacquet between 1675 and 1676. And over the years, prominent citizens of Quebec City have lived here, including Philippe Aubert de Gaspé, who's the author of Les Anciennes Canadiennes. He lived here from 1815 to 1824. Now, as you can see, it's a restaurant inspired by the same called Aux Anciennes Canadiennes. And fun fact, my parents have eaten here on one of their excursions to Quebec, as well as my brother on a school trip. Talking about this restaurant makes me hungry. We had the fixed menu and ordered the French onion soup to start, a main dish called Grandma's Treat, which is Quebec meat pie with enough side dishes to fill the plate, and of course we finished with dessert, which was maple syrup pie. Eating here was a fun experience and we really enjoyed thinking about all the years of history that have passed in this house. Let me know in the comments if this looks like a meal you'd enjoy tucking into and which other spot in this video piques your interest. I'll link other videos we've made about Quebec City in the description box, so check those out to see more. We also made a series about an amazing road trip we did all around the Gaspé region of Quebec, which is not far from Quebec City. Gaspé is an absolutely beautiful area with amazing nature and wildlife, fresh seafood, and tons of fun things to do. It's a fantastic place for a road trip, and I highly recommend combining Gaspé and Quebec City into one incredible experience. I'm also posting content over on Instagram, so follow me there for more, including highlights I've made of Quebec City and Gaspé. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. A bientôt.